this video, we're going to make a rafter that looks like this, out of a length of 2 by 4, about 2.5 feet long. The rafter we're making is from this rafter layout skill development exercise sheet. It's a rafter like you would use on a shed or a doghouse. It has a total run of one and a half feet, which means it's for a three foot wide building measured to the outside of the wall framing. The slope of the rafter is nine to 12, which means it has nine inches of rise for every foot of run. At the top, the plumb cut will be adjusted for our one and a half inch thick ridge board. And at the bird's mouth, the plumb cut will be adjusted for half inch thick sheathing applied to the outside of the wall frame. The tail of the rafter has plumb and level cuts that are laid out for one by four soffit and fascia. All the specs you need to make your rafter are given on the worksheet. Below the specifications, you'll find the step-by-step -step procedure. The diagram on the worksheet explains all of the new terminology. First, let's have a quick look at some of the geometry behind roof framing. Here's a line one and a half feet long representing the total run of our rafter. And here's the slope of our nine inch rise to 12 inch run. When we extend that slope to the center line, it shows the total rise of our roof. The hypotenuse of that triangle gives us our line length, which is the starting point for laying out our rafter. The line length is the distance from the top outside corner of the top plate of the wall to the center line of the building measured along the slope. At the top, the rafter will be adjusted for half the thickness of the ridge board. At the bottom, an adjustment will be made to add the thickness of the wall sheathing to the plumb cut of the bird's mouth. When you lay out a bird's mouth joint, you have to watch out for two things. Number one is that the seat cut has to be fully supported by the top plate. Number two is that there needs to be enough wood left over after you cut your bird's mouth joint so that the rafter tail is strong enough to support loads without breaking. For this rafter, we're looking for the height above plate to be two thirds of the vertical height of the installed rafter measured along the building line. Remember that the building line is the outside face of the wall framing and the sheathing is on the outside of the building line. So this triangle that we've just drawn is the basis for all our roof calculations. Let's see how it relates to an actual rafter. Here's what our rafter will actually look like relative to the triangle we've just drawn. The base of our theoretical triangle is the top of the top plate or cap plate. And the vertical leg of the triangle is the center line of the building. Where it gets confusing is that the measuring line or the hypotenuse of the triangle that we use to get our line length from doesn't correspond with either edge of the rafter. The measuring line intersects with the base at the top outside corner of the top plate, and it rises to the center line at that 912 roof slope. The height of our theoretical triangle is called the total rise of the roof, and you can calculate it by multiplying our one and a half foot run by our nine inch unit rise to get 13 and a half inches of total rise. If you want to know the actual height of the ridge above the top plate though, you need to add the height above plate to that total rise. You can see that the height above plate is measured along the building line and that the plumb cut of the bird's mouth is cut past the building line to allow for the wall sheathing. run through the procedure on the handout to lay out that rafter using the step off method. Here's a fence set up on a framing square to that 912 slope. The fence is made out of a piece of scrap wood with some slots cut in it and it's adjusted by loosening and tightening the screws that clamp the blade. The length along the fence between the 9 and the 12 is our unit line length or length of rafter per foot run. Using Pythagoras theorem, we know that that length is 15 inches. 
But using the step off method, we don't calculate the line length. Instead, we use the square with the fence on it to step off as many lengths per foot of run as there are feet of run. The first thing you want to do when you start laying out a raptor is check if there's any crown in the board. If there is, mark the crown and put that side up. Next, start laying out the line length of your rafter by marking a plumb cut representing the center line of the ridge. Now, without moving the fence, mark the other end of the square to get, mark one of your unit line lengths. And that's where you'll move the square to to mark your next unit line length. Our total run for this rafter is only one and a half feet. So we put a plumb line at that one foot mark and then find the six inch mark. And that's where we'll put the plumb line for our building line. Now that we've stepped off our line length, it's time to make the adjustment for half the thickness of our ridge board and mark the plumb cut line for the ridge. Half the thickness of the ridge is three quarters of an inch. So we're going to mark that using the square and the fence to mark it perpendicular to the plumb line. Then strike that line down and that's the line we'll actually cut when it comes time to saw out our rafter. Next we'll move down to the heel of the rafter and we'll figure out our height above plate. Two thirds height above plate. Our vertical height is four and a half inches. One third of that is one and a half. And there's the seat cut for our bird's mouth joint. Now we're gonna make an adjustment at the building line to get the plumb cut for our bird's mouth joint, which is gonna be the thickness of the wall sheathing past the building line. So we're using half inch wall sheathing make a perpendicular mark one half inch past the building line and there's the plumb cut for our bird's mouth. The plumb cut of our rafter tail allows for the half inch sheathing and then three and a half inch one by four for the soffit. So we measure four inches past the building line out toward the rafter tail, make a mark, slide the square down and then make our plumb cut line for the rafter tail. Now we've got our plumb cut line on the tail. Next we'll mark our level cut line on the tail. Our tail cut level line is located two and a half inches down from the top edge of the rafter measured along the plumb cut line. Once you've marked your level cut on the tail, your rafter layout is complete. It's time to get a skill saw and a hand saw and cut out your rafter. Don't overcut your bird's mouth joint with a skill saw Finish it off with a handsaw to keep it as strong as it can be. Let's have a look at laying out the same rafter using a little bit of math rather than the step off method. Calculating the line length tends to be a lot more accurate than stepping it off. Calculating the line length is done by multiplying the total run of our rafter by the length per unit run, which in our case is the length of the hypotenuse of a 9 inch by 12 inch right triangle. The total run for this rafter is one and a half feet and to find the length per unit run we can look at the rafter tables for the length of common rafters per foot run. If we look under the 9 we'll see the number 15 which means that a roof with a 912 slope is 15 inches long for every foot of run. 
by multiplying one and a half feet times our 15 inches of length per foot of run, we find that our total line length is 22 and a half inches. Now we go straight to marking a plumb line, mark representing the center line of our building. If we mark it right on the corner, we can hook a tape on that corner and pull the line length that we've calculated all the way down to the building line. By calculating the line length and then pulling it with the tape from one end, you eliminate the chance for compound error that you get with the step-off method. Now that we have our line length marked on our rafter between the center line and the building line, all the rest of the steps are exactly the same as what we saw in the earlier example. We'll make an adjustment for half the thickness of the ridge and mark the ridge plum cut line. We'll make the adjustment for the wall sheathing and mark the bird's mouth plum cut line. And we'll find two thirds of the vertical height to mark our height above plate and mark our bird's mouth seat cut line. We'll mark the plum cut on the tail, the level cut on the tail, and then cut out the rafter and see if it fits.